Well, it's cold, we're still in lockdown, and I've got to stick a swab up my nose twice a week for COVID lateral flow testing. But never mind, the sun's out this morning and we've got some audio gear to geek out over. It's all good. Welcome back to the channel, audio nerds. Now, many of you will also be huge fans of dank pods. I certainly am, and if you haven't watched any of his videos, please do so because they are much better than mine. But please finish watching this video first. Now, one of the in-ear monitors, or IEMs, that he recommends all the time are these, the KZZSN Pro Xs. That's a lot of letters smashed together. What does it all mean? Well, KZ stands for Knowledge Zenith, which was one of the first popular Chinese hi-fi or chi-fi companies. The ZSN is one of their cheaper offerings, and indeed these buds will set you back around £20 here in the UK. The X, I think, is because this is the second version of these particular buds. And how about the Pro? Well, everyone's a pro these days, aren't they? Who needs a reason? So, apart from an unwieldy acronym, what do you get for your hard-earned 20 quid? The box is a slick but fairly simple affair with a clear plastic cover inside showing off the buds themselves. As you can see, I've already ripped mine from their eye sockets. Now, being a middle-aged and somewhat boring kind of fellow, I've gone for the somewhat subdued black version. If you're young and rather more flamboyant, you will be happy to hear that you can also get them in a rather blinging gold. Apart from the buds themselves and the cable and two pairs of not very good different sized ear tips which are a bit miserable you get nothing else not even a little carrying pouch which is a real shame looking at the buds themselves they're not the smallest nor are they the most subtle there's a metal outer plate which you can see here and that conceals the plastic shell which houses all the technical gubbins in this case it's a driver assembly comprising a dynamic driver and a balanced armature driver Basically, the dynamic driver is really good for reproducing lower frequencies and the balanced armature is meant to give a detailed representation of the higher frequencies in this case. But hold your horses, we'll get on to sound quality in a minute. The buds feel pretty well built on the whole. They're easy to get the tips onto the nozzles. Buds do fit my ears quite well. They don't intrude too deeply into your lug holes, which by the way is what us Brits call ears. They stay in place pretty well for me and are surprisingly comfortable. Quite remarkably at this price point, the cable does detach. It's a kind of a proprietary two pin connector rather than the MMCX, which I prefer, but it's good to know that I can get another cable when this one inevitably wears out. Remember, it was just a few years ago when even really expensive IEMs like these, my Shaw SE530, I think that's right, no, 535s, that's right, they didn't come with a detachable cable. The cable is built in and it's a common site of failure. The cable on the X Pros is quite nice. It's fairly thick, it's tangle proof, and it's quite comfortable with minimal microphonic noise. You know, that really annoying crackling you get when the cable bangs against clothing and rubs against your beard. So, on to the sound. Here is a frequency response curve of the X-Pros. If you're not familiar with these curves, basically, as we move along the graph, we go from the lower bass to the higher treble frequencies. And if a piece of equipment is truly neutral, then the line would be completely flat, like that. But that's quite hard to achieve mechanically, and it doesn't make for that lively, exciting sound signature which are fun-loving auditory nerves crave. Unless you're an audio engineer or a serious audiophile, you're after a bit of oomph. So, the X-Pros, in common with many budget IEMs, give a slight lift to the bass frequencies, as you can see here, and also to selected upper mid-range and treble frequencies. This is a really common manoeuvre to give the illusion of some extra impact in the bass and try and bring the vocals and the high frequencies to the fore. Now, I'm sorry for that science lecture. I promise I won't go on any longer. Go away, iPad. Man, do I love science, though. Graphs are one thing, though, but how do these actually sound? And are they worth the praise which Dank Pods lavishes on them? Well, I'm pleased to say that for the money, these actually sound very decent. 
Yes, you'll keep hearing me say for the money because you need to remember that these things cost a week's worth of posh lattes from Cafe Nero here in the UK. Obviously, up against something like the Shure SE 535, they sound rubbish. However, these probably cost about a year's worth of Cafe Nero lattes. The base is, I think, the best feature of the X Pros. It's slightly accentuated but remains well under control and it's definitely not boomy. It never threatens to overwhelm the instruments in the lower mid-range. Now clearly bass detail is a little bit lacking, so in bass heavy tracks for example, and there are drums, bass guitars and bass synth lines all overlaid, something like Massive Attack's uh, mezzanine album, fantastic album. Uh, sometimes it can be difficult to separate one bass instrument from another. You need much more expensive driver arrays for that. The mid-range is on the whole slightly recessed, but it's still present and indeed it's still pleasant. Now the first big boost comes in the upper mid-range, which unfortunately can make vocals, particularly high male and female vocals, sound a little bit shouty and fatiguing. The next boost is in the mid treble range and this gives rise to some sibilance on higher pitch vocals and also on cymbals. Overall these do make all the higher frequency range sounds a little bit grainy at higher volumes and when you compare them to more expensive offerings such as the Moondrop Starfields at about £70 they don't sound as smooth in comparison and you realize the limitations of only spending 20 pounds on headphones nevertheless and here comes that phrase again for the price i'm nitpicking because actually the sound stage out of these things is very decent with pretty wide stereo separation the depth of the listening field however is less impressive and imaging is only so-so look overall they by no means sound bad and compared to true wireless headphones which often cost many times more than these they actually sound really good i like the build quality i like the cable i like the fact that it detaches and all in all i think this adds up to a very decent 20 quid package so i think we can agree that dank pods got it right as far as these go good job mate i'd be happy to recommend them to anyone wanting decent sound for relatively little money However, I think you can do better at the sub £30 mark and keep watching the channel, maybe even go crazy and subscribe to hear my thoughts on other contenders. But that's it for today, except to give you the answer to the lyrics from episode one. If you remember, that was, I let the music wrap its warm arms around me. And that, of course, is a line from Disco Compilation, one of the standout tracks from Serafina Steer's 2013 album, The Moths Are Real. If you haven't heard that one yet, it's definitely worth a spin. Okay, audio fixated friends, stay safe, and I'll be back soon with another video. And in the next video, I'll be looking at some, shall we say, somewhat vintage gear. Until then, though, I'm out. See ya.